Well, it's 48 hours post-surgery. Um, I'm gonna talk about uh, pre-op, uh, what the surgeon said about the actual surgery, uh, post-op, some of the stuff I did in the hospital, and then my first uh, like 12 hours at home. So, surgery. We'll talk about uh, before surgery. They want you to uh, use this fancy soap to really clean yourself because apparently the most one of the most dangerous things about back surgery is uh, risk of infection, and if that gets infected, it's no good. So you got to shower the night before your surgery with um, some fancy soap, and then shower again the morning of with some fancy soap. Uh, get to the hospital. I <clears throat> was wiped down again by a bunch of like antibacterial pads. Um, and then the last thing I remember before surgery, I was uh, in the operating room, big old lights, and I'll be honest, I was pretty nervous. Uh, they gave me some oxygen and next thing I knew, I was out. I uh, don't really remember waking up. Uh, I remember being in post-op, but and I remember talking to the surgeon and the post-op nurses, but I really can't remember what I said, or I know that I was joking with people. They were actually impressed with how well I was able to uh, talk to them and stuff, but that's what they told me later. I, like I said, I don't even remember it. The actual surgery, what he said he saw. <clears throat> so the herniated disc between my L4, L5, he saw it actually protruding uh, downward towards like my my left glute and actually touching uh, the nerve root that we were uh, worried about. So he actually saw it touching, he cut it off. I asked him, you know, how much of my disc is left? Is it 75%, 80%? He's like, no, I just cut off the herniated part. And he basically said it grows like, um, it almost grows like a wart or something, you know, and if you cut the wart off, your skin's still there. So he said, I still have 100% of my disc, which didn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but I'll take his word for it. He's the surgeon. Um, the surgery took three hours ish. Uh, he expected it to take a little over two hours, but he said that the muscle in my lower back was actually hard to move to the side than he, he had anticipated because they didn't cut through the muscle, they just moved the muscle to the side, so that was good. Uh, but it did take longer than expected. Oh, and the, uh, the incision, um, he said is about half the size of my pinky finger. I haven't seen it, but that was one of the things he, uh, he made sure to tell me, I can't, I can't shower at all for the next, like, basically two weeks till I have my follow-up appointment. So, um, my beautiful wife gets to give me sponge baths for the next two weeks. So can't get that incision wet. I'm not even supposed to redo the dressings because he said that the cleanest dressing is the one he put on me in the operating room. So he will take off the dressing um, at my follow-up appointment. So that's basically surgery. I've been sitting around like a uh, five and a six pain scale basically since I left since I got operated on it really hasn't changed besides last night um, it probably went down to a two at times but now I'm dealing with a, like nausea and hot flashes so that's why I have this wet towel on my head I probably should have explained that earlier but oh well uh, we'll get into that a little bit more later so post-op they basically had me uh, see a physical therapist within like the first three hours and um, I was up and walking. I did one lap with a walker. A lap meaning just around the uh, the floor that I was on. And then I did one another lap without a walker. And she said that she's never done that um, with someone that quickly. So that was good. I was optimistic there. But uh, I mean, I'm just hoping that wasn't too fast but I felt fine, I felt like I could do it. It wasn't any extra pain, so I did it. Um, while I was in the hospital, I did a lot of walking. I was able to 
get up and out of the uh, the bed that I was in by myself. Um, I was able to uh, get up and go to the bathroom by myself. Uh, one of the prerequisites before you leave basically is that you that pee or urinate. So I did that and that was good. The, the biggest problem with me has not been pain really so far up until this morning, but the majority of the worst problem I've been having is this nausea. And I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if it's from the pain, pain medication or the antibiotics, but right now it's just the nausea that's a real problem. Uh, we switched between two different narcotics at the hospital to try to get this nausea thing figured out. One was Norco, and then now I'm on um, Tramadol uh, for the pain, but I haven't really noticed either of these painkillers really helping me, to be honest, which is a drag. So I don't know how much longer I'm going to take them. They give you antibiotics to basically make sure that that cut uh, heals and doesn't get infected, so they keep antibiotics in you. What else can you expect at the hospital? I can't really think of anything, but I will give a shout out to uh, the hospital, Honor Health Deer Valley. They were awesome to me and my family. Uh, very, very helpful. Very, just good hospital. Highly recommend. Uh, um, if you have to go to a hospital, which I hope you don't, but it's a good place to go. And Dr. Landsman did a great surgery. Now on to the home, home life. Um, I got home and I was feeling, feeling okay. Home from the hospital. Back hurts like crazy, but no more leg pain as of yet. So that's a huge deal. Uh, when I first got home, I was super sore. Like I said, it's basically the pain in my back. It just feels like someone's squeezing my spinal cord. Uh, and while someone's squeezing it, someone's also punching it consistently. Strict instructions, no bending, lifting, or twisting. So. so, the beds at the hospital, they're pretty firm, pretty solid, so it was easy to get up and get, to get out of those beds. What I've realized at home is my bed is way too soft, so it's really, really hard to get, to get out of bed and to move around in the bed, uh, because I'm supposed to keep my back straight, um, no, no bending or twisting, which, I mean, try it in your bed. Try to move around without bending or twisting, um, and then add in a whole bunch of pain to it. It's pretty difficult, so I'm gonna have to find something else. But in the middle of the night last night, I get super, super nauseous, and I felt like I was gonna throw up. Uh, so thank God my wife was around. She got me some anti-nausea pills, and I was able to kind of shake it and not throw up, because when I throw up, it is, uh, a big big deal whole body it goes into like a seizure <laughs> it's not easy for me so if I throw up that is really really bad for my back and I'm really hoping that that doesn't happen so when I got up this morning I was trying to get out of bed for about 20 minutes this morning and each time I would feel a really really sharp pain in my uh, left glute and down my left leg which is the ultimate reason why I had the surgery so um I don't know if it was a combination of the pain and um, sadness, I guess. And so I got nauseous again um, this morning and almost threw up. But this towel's helping that, those, uh, the heat flashes. So now I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to sleep, where I'm going to sleep, because the bed just was not working last night. And uh, I just tried to get off the couch from a laying position, and that left leg hurt pretty bad. But as most of you guys know, when you work out, 
the second day after you work out is the most you're sore. So I'm hoping that, you know, he had to go in, move the muscle, um, just things are still sore and inflamed and that's why I'm having that leg pain. Uh, but with that said, the most nerve wracking thing is that nausea problem. So I hope that that can go away because I do not want to throw up. I'm going to see if I could film a video of me getting up, but I don't know if you guys want to see 15 minutes of me struggling to uh, get up from a laying down position. I should have filmed that at the hospital because I was kicking ass when I was doing it at the hospital. So this is what it's like to sit down and stand up uh, from a chair at this point, 48 hours later. Um, so doing it without bracing myself on anything, but I mean, watch how slow I have to go. It's pretty crazy. So while I did that, I basically am squeezing my core as tight as possible and using a lot of my quads and I'm basically not putting any pressure on my hamstrings. I don't know if you caught it, I doubt it, but it was a, I was basically on my toes and the balls of my feet the whole time when I was sitting down because I don't want that, my back, my lower back to round at all. So when I stand up. I've been using my hands to brace myself, put them on my uh, quads. <clears throat> and that's about as fast as I'm going. This is about as fast as I walk. Excuse the, uh, excuse the mess. So that's about as fast as I've been walking. While I walk, like I said, I feel that, like someone's squeezing uh, my lower back and my spine. Sorry if this video wasn't all that exciting. Uh, I'm on painkillers, I'm hurting, but hopefully that get, gives you guys a little bit of what to expect in the first 48 hours of your discectomy. I think my next video, uh, will probably be five days to a week um, post-op. If you have any questions, uh, comment below, um, subscribe to the channel so you can get alerts on my next videos. Uh, like if this information is good to you, it, it would be appreciative to know that this is helping someone out. So I'm not doing these videos for nothing, but I know it would have helped me out if I saw kind of how an athlete was recovering from the surgery. So I appreciate you watching and I will try to make the next video more exciting, but can only do so much right now. All right, thanks guys.